Tor and Sines usually don't mesh very well together. At least, this is the prevailing view. I beg to differ. The Midrash, an ancient repository of rabbinic wisdom, suggests that when God created the world, he looked to the Torah to serve as his blueprint. Shouldn't the world then have some resemblance to the blueprint? Let me show you a glimpse of how modern ideas of quantum physics beautifully mesh with our ancient Torah. All scientific theories other than quantum mechanics study nature directly. In quantum mechanics, on the other hand, we study not the objects, but our state of knowledge about them. The main equation of quantum mechanics is the Schrodinger equation, describing the evolution of the so-called wave function. The wave function describes our level of confidence in finding a particle in a particular place or a state. Thus, quantum mechanics is an epistemic theory, which pertains to the question of how we know what we know. Torah is largely epistemic as well. A good example of that is the sanctification of a new moon. The very first commandment given by God to Jewish people after the exodus from Egypt was the commandment to sanctify a new month. According to the Jewish law, two witnesses who observed the new moon had to come forward to the Sanhedrin, the Supreme Court in Jerusalem, and testify that they saw the moon. It was based on this testimony the High Court proclaimed the beginning of the new month. What is important is not when the new moon actually appears, but our knowledge of this fact based on the observation, which is a clear example of epistemology. Randomness. Randomness plays a central role in Judaism. In biblical times, the holiest day of the year, Yom Kippur, was marked by special services performed by the high priest. Two goats were brought to the holy temple in Jerusalem, where the high priest would cast lots for each of the goats. If the lot was marked to God, the goat would be sacrificed to God in the temple. If the lot was marked to Azazel, the goat would be designated as the scapegoat and cast down from a cliff. The high priest relied on the random choice, in this case a lottery, to determine the fate of each goat. It is for this reason the day is called Yom HaKippurim, the date of the lots. Randomness is viewed as a vehicle for divine providence. Schrodinger's cat is a strange quantum mechanical creature thought up by one of the founders of quantum mechanics, Erwin Schrodinger himself. The Schrodinger cat is an interesting quantum mechanical creature stuck in the blurred state of superposition of being dead and alive. There are four possible classical states that can be assigned to the cat. Alive, dead, both, or neither. The formal logical analysis of the Schrodinger cat experiment reveals that cat is neither dead nor alive, nor both, no, neither, but is in the fifth state, called the state of superposition. The state is thought to be unique to quantum mechanics and is unknown in classical physics. Schrodinger was so taken aback by such an absurd possibility that he, along with Einstein, held it against the quantum theory he held formulate. Unbeknownst to physicists and philosophers of science, the state was well known to Jewish sages hundreds of years before the advent of modern physics. Let us consider the concept of twilight, Bain Hashmashot, which is the period between day and night. According to various opinions, twilight is day. One does not have to start Shabbat until the first stars appear on Friday night. Or it's a night, according to this opinion, one ends Shabbat with sunset on Saturday. Or it may be both, according to this opinion, the period of Ben Hashmashot has a duration during which time one is forbidden from work both on the day preceding Shabbat as well as after it, which is the reason why most Orthodox Jews start Shabbat with sunset on Friday night 
and ended with the nightfall on Saturday. Four, neither. According to this opinion, Ben Hashmoshet is an infinitely short moment in time, separating day from night, which has no duration. Last, it may be neither day, nor night, nor both, nor neither. Ben Hashmoshet is a unique state which has its own set of laws. It is the fifth opinion that corresponds to quantum mechanical state of superposition. Entanglement is one of the most mysterious features of quantum mechanics. When obtaining information of one object improves our knowledge of the other object, the two objects are said to be entangled. Let us consider two entangled electrons, each in a state of superposition of having their spin up and down, which is analogous to a classical top spinning clockwise and counterclockwise at the same time. In quantum world, this is possible. If we find the direction of the spin of one particle, then immediately the wave function of the second electron is collapsed, pointing in the opposite direction. Hence, the two are entangled. At first blush, this seems mind-boggling. How could the second electron find out about the collapse of the wave function of the first electron? If two particles are far enough from each other, this can mean a signal traveling faster than light. Einstein took umbrage at this situation, calling it a spooky action at a distance. Actually, there is no signal traveling between the entangled electrons. It is just that learning about one electron reveals information about the other without any information exchange between them. How? Let's slice a coin in half along its circumference so that we get two half coins, one heads and the other tails. Let's put each of these half coins in a separate envelope. We will mail these two envelopes to two physics students, Alice and Bob. If Alice received the half with heads, she knows that Bob received the half with tails, and vice versa. It is possible to find information about one object by learning about another object without any communication between the two. In the book of Exodus, when God showed Moses a fiery coin, Perhaps God was teaching Moses the concept of entanglement. As the verse relates, the rich shall give no more, and the poor shall give no less than half a shekel. Each of us is only half a coin. Together, we can form a whole. This concept finds an expression in Jewish law, halacha, in the principle, kol Israel arevim zebaze. all Jews are responsible for each other. Based on this principle, one Jew can exempt another from fulfilling a commandment. For example, when I make Kiddush on Shabbat, all present at my table fulfill the obligation to sanctify Shabbat through me. This is Jewish entanglement in action. Remember the two goats brought to the temple on Yom Kippur? They are entangled too. If one of them suddenly were to die or develop a blemish that disqualified it, for sacrificial purposes, would have to replace both, not just one goat. Being designated as a pair, they became entangled. They are one unit. For those of us who can't get enough of Schrodinger cat, comes a new feline, Quantum Cheshire cat. In Alice in Wonderland, Alice meets a grinning Cheshire cat. To her amazement, the cat disappeared, leaving only his grin behind. All right, said the cat. And this time, it vanished quite slowly, beginning with the end of a tail and ending with a grin, which remained some time after the rest of it had gone. Well, I've often seen a cat without a grin, but a grin without a cat? It's the most curious thing I ever saw in my life. According to Martin Gardner, the statement a green without a cat is a reference to mathematics, dissociating itself completely from the natural world. Quantum Cheshire Cat was predicted by the Israeli physicist Yakir Aronov in 2013. Just as Cheshire Cat can be separated from its green, so quantum particles may be separated from one of its quantum characteristics, such as a charge, a spin, or magnetic momentum.
In 2014, scientists in Grenoble, France, performed weak measurements on the neutrons going through the interferometer, thereby demonstrating that neutrons travel via one path, while the disembodied magnetic momenta travel via a different path. In the end, neutrons and their magnetic momenta happily reunite. It seems to me a green without a cat may also be a reference to a soul dissociating itself from the body. The quantum Cheshire cat experiment is an excellent metaphor for Tehiyat Hamitim, the resurrection of the dead. Borrowing from our quantum analogy, death could be viewed as passing through an interferometer of sorts, a beam splitter, where the soul gets separated from the body. From that point on, the lifeless body and the disembodied soul travel different paths, only to be reunited at the time of resurrection of the dead. During their separate existence, the body and the soul remain entangled, as it were, which assures that the resurrected body will be matched with its very own soul. What we have seen is just a small sampling of beautiful analogies that coexist in the world of physics and the Torah. I make no claim that quantum mechanics proved the Torah or the Torah predicts quantum mechanics. However, this interdisciplinary approach rewards us with cross-pollination benefiting both disciplines. Quantum mechanics helps understand Torah on a deeper level, and Torah provides us with rich metaphors that help better understand quantum mechanics.